Hello and welcome to Planning Your Local Flavor Painting. My name is Eric and today we're going to be talking about translating images that you have either taken from your own photography or from an online source uh, and translating them into um, drawings, uh, an underpainting, and then eventually a finished painting. Uh, two of my sources here are, are both homes. Um, I like both of these images um, for different reasons. Uh, I think I went with this red one just because some of the structural forms are a little bit more interesting. Uh, and I really like this lattice work at the top of this uh, kind of extension three season room thing. Uh, so I've picked my source. Um, notice I have also folded this down. I've sort of cropped this image. Um, feel free to do that. That's all part of the process of planning at the early stages. Um, taking a little bit of the ground plane out. Um, reducing a little bit of the sky, some of the negative space on this side. I want the house to be the subject matter. Uh, so cropping that is very easy. Um, and in a sketch, you can do that as well. Take it that next step um, in your thumbnails. So I'm observing my image and I'm trying to plan my underpainting. When I look at this image, I see one, two, three, maybe four, uh, as far as uh, colors, main colors. We have the blue of the sky, the green of the grass, uh, the off red of the um, house, uh, and then this sort of cream color of this extension room. Um, so I'm only going to be mixing a few colors today uh, because an underpainting it should just be that. It should be an underpainting that makes it easier to paint on top of. Uh, remember, we're not trying to come in and get every little detail at the beginning. Uh, I think a lot of people coming from drawing want to draw paintings or paint drawings, however you want to think about it. They want to come in and they want to sketch every little line. They have that skill set. So they want to draw all of this linear perspective as tightly as they can. They want to make sure everything is primed on this canvas first as far as a drawing. And then they want to sort of paint by numbers. It's a less rewarding way of painting. Uh, and it's not really the proper way of painting. Um, sort of painting big to small, back to front, thin to thick. Uh, so our goal is going to be priming our canvas, getting it ready with our acrylic paint, um, to paint in the next video. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to attempt to get you into palette vision. Hopefully we can sort of stay there. Not bad. Okay, so <clears throat> the colors that I have here are all colors that should be on your uh, materials list. I'm going to be starting by mixing, if I can get this image here, um, some blues, some reds, uh, maybe a green, uh, and then maybe this cream color. I might just take the red all the way across. Um, but let's do this. So you'll notice that I'm going to be adding white to all of my colors. A little bit of white increases the opacity of your tones especially on top of a white gessoed canvas. So a little bit of white goes a long way. On a jar, you just take it with a, a knife. Uh, this is my CAD red. Get a little bit of that red. And I have a decent size palette here. So it's easy for me to spread out this is the, uh, the Stay Wet palette, 12 inch by 16 inch that I've recommended, all primed and prepared the same way with a wet paper towel, piece of palette paper on top. Let's mix a few colors. This is uh, my ultramarine. You could use your cobalt blue as well for a sky plane, pretty simple. And guys, it's gonna be impossible for me to anticipate everybody's composition. Some people are gonna be doing downtown Chicago, some people are doing more rural scenes. Um, as long as we have a piece of architecture, like the house, and we have some organic object. Uh, in mine, I have a lawn, some bushes, small tree in the side. Um, that's what we're looking for. Uh, as in the first painting, we were trying to apply paint in two different ways. The toilet paper, one, sort of a softer application and the foil more abruptly. In this, we're gonna be trying to uh, develop colors. Um, but once again, it's your first full color painting. It's hard for me to anticipate what all the colors are gonna be. Um, as I'm mixing here, 
The reason I'm putting a little bit of white, I'm just once again pushing that opacity and I'm just worried about an underpainting. I'm gonna do a little bit of your raw umber. Uh, you have to be careful with the raw umber, it's pretty strong. It will really mute your color. But it's a good way to try and reduce some of the bold cadmium coming through. There's gonna be a lot of issues we have to deal with in this first painting. One of the first issues is called uh, dechroma-ing a piece uh, or a, a, a hue or type of paint. This has a huge chroma or pigment load. It's very bright, it's very synthetic. Uh, same thing here with the ultramarine. It looks like it was made in a factory, because uh, it was. To dechroma that or to de take some of that shine out, you have to mix it down. White is a good way to start reducing. A little bit of brown is a good way of pulling it uh, naturalistically as well. I'm gonna put a little bit into our blue for the sky here. I'm just gonna take a little bit here. Once again, that's that raw umber. Change that color just a little bit. Okay, so we have our red and our blue. Our red is very, very bold still. Um, I could add a little bit more of this raw umber. I think I will, just to try and pull it a little bit more naturalistic. When you see uh, my source material, those bricks, they're definitely red, but they're not cadmium bright ass red. And I got a little bit of blue in here too. Doesn't matter. Didn't really clean my palette knife that well. It's actually a good thing. <clears throat> Concept called local color. We'll talk about that more when we're actually refining finishing colors. But we're still in that uh, preliminary stage. Um, okay, so we have the sky, we have the house, and notice it's not completely mixed. That's okay. Uh, especially in the underpainting. We still have to mix a green and then maybe a little bit of a cream color. Um, I think for the cream color, especially in this first stage, all I'm going to do is take a little bit of my red and just add a little bit more white. Because I'm really not trying to mix any permanent colors right now. That'll be good enough to create a transition there so I can see the transition. Uh, and now I have to mix a green. So I am gonna clean my palette knife off just by grabbing it uh, and pulling it clean. We have a nice blue here. Uh, we're gonna get just a little bit of yellow. To create a nice green, the ratio of yellow to blue uh, is going to be like 70-30 or 80-20. Uh, I'm actually going to take some of that already has some white in here. You can always add more blue if you want. It's almost impossible to bring it back. And yeah, look at that. That was like a 90-10, 95-5 maybe. We're already getting sort of to a, uh, a light green there. Nowhere near that yet. Grab a little bit maybe of the pure here, pure ultramarine. Go a little bit faster. Pretty quickly. Notice I added just the littlest bit. And we already have a nice decent green there. Once again, I'm not trying to color match perfectly. I'm not trying to play in clouds. I'm not even worrying about any sort of internal details like the door or the windows or the lattice work or even the bushes or anything like that. I'm just planning an underpainting. And some of these colors will be close. I will continue to use uh, these colors as I continue to mix my real colors uh, for my actual painting. Um, but for now, this is gonna be good enough. Um, notice this is nowhere even near this cream. I'm not really that worried about it. Once again, this is just an under painting. All right, back at here. Get this looking on the canvas. And we are going to be planning our painting here. So, underpainting. Resist the urge to just draw every little detail. Some of you are gonna wanna do that. I get the impulse. Um, I access painting through drawing as well, and it was difficult for me to loosen up and let the painting process um, actually do its job. Um, but if you try, it's a little bit more difficult than once again, setting this up uh, like a, almost paint by numbers, every single space being planned for you and you just filling space with color. It's less rewarding that way, and this is a much more organic, uh, rewarding way of painting. So this is the way I'm going to ask you to paint. 
So, once again, the colors aren't really even that close, and I'm not really gonna sketch anything. I'm just gonna take loose measurements here. Starting from the back, I'm gonna do a little bit of sky. So I'm loading my brush with some blue, and I'm just gonna start adding some blue marks. At this point, water can still be a very helpful thing. I grab just a little bit of water, continue to push. You notice that it will extend my medium. It also will reduce some opacity. So coming back on top with a little bit more pure paint can help even that out. But this diagonal is about there. It doesn't really matter if I'm getting the perfect composition right now or the perfect proportions of my source material. Once again, this drives a lot of people crazy especially coming from drawing, uh, where they've maybe even gridded off drawings or source material, uh, like taking a Chuck Close approach. You can absolutely do that for painting, and many people do do that. But I think this is a more re rewarding way of painting, and usually the quality of the painting at the end is more naturalistic. We'll talk about that more as we continue through. Sort of goes hand in hand with the idea of local color as well. Okay, so it's close. Uh, this roof line is diagonal and there's some sort of port windows pushing out. So I might pull this down just a little bit further. I think I'm also going to omit certain things in the back. Little details back here. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do yet. Um, so I'm just gonna come in with blue and, uh, and plan it out. We'll cut this just a little bit more in. Maybe pull just a little bit more water. And sort of just soften that sky plane. Once again, broad brush strokes. If you look closely, there's no texture on the canvas. Nice and thin brush strokes all the way through. Okay, blue's looking good. I'm gonna clean my brush. Push it all the way down multiple times. Take a rag and wipe it. We're looking good. Okay, uh, now we're looking either at the ground plane or the house. I think I'm gonna do the ground plane first. Uh, coming across, <clears throat> the ground is gonna start here and work obviously all the way across um, as we move through. And I would say that's a little bit of an unattractive green. Once I get it up on the canvas, it's a little bit more yellow. So I could absolutely add some more blue to that. But notice I'm not even looking for full saturation on the canvas, I'm just trying to get closer. The goal of an underpainting is for when you start painting, your colors are closer than they are to just a pure white, which trust me there, if you haven't tried that yet, Painting directly on top of white gesso, especially with a dark value, like a cobalt violet or a ultramarine, is a huge headache. It makes a lot more sense to do thin, lots of layers. Okay, coming in, gonna do a quick clean on my brush. Once again, it doesn't really matter for mixing paint though. Grab a little bit of that red uh, and finish off this, this section here. So again, this is a mixture of cadmium red, uh, white, and a little bit of raw umber. And let it bleed over. You don't want white space, that's the whole idea. And it doesn't matter if it's perfect or not. Just let it go right over. Some of this looser stuff up here, it still, once again, doesn't matter. Uh, this is still just the underpainting. And if you have a more complex composition or, or multiple buildings with different color transitions, you can do minor color shifts at this point or tonal shifts by adding a little bit of white uh, to create a tint of the color or uh, adding a little bit of a complement uh, or like a, a raw umber, a darker brown uh, to change and darken the value a little bit. But we're getting close here. 
And once again, the overall goal here is just to cover all the white. I'm getting close to this, uh, this room here, which I'm gonna try and plan out a little bit. Once again, when it gets a little bit tacky, I'm just grabbing little bits of water, spreading it further. Even if it doesn't go all the way into the bristles, or excuse me, the texture of the canvas, a little bit of water helps. Broad brush strokes. Uh, and then, I actually think that the sky comes down a little bit more on the left side, and we still have that little room, so I'm gonna grab just a little bit of this lighter value which I didn't really clean my brush in between. And that comes to a point somewhere into here. Unless I'm just painting right over another section, it doesn't matter. A little bit of water. Finish up that little section. Okay, that comes down, up. Up, down. I'm gonna grab a little bit of blue to finish. Right here, all the way down. Make sure we don't have any white. Once again, guys, gesso is a great material. Uh, it's a great medium that helps prime your canvas and lets you use um, paint on top without affecting the canvas under it. Uh, especially for oil paint. Acrylic paint's kind of just liquid plastic, so it doesn't really matter. But as you can see here, it's a very, very basic composition. If I put this up next to it, uh, you might not even be able to tell what I was looking at. But I'm not really interested in exact details yet. Once this dries, my next video, we're going to be talking about uh, actually sketching on top of this. Um, if you would have sketched already, you would have covered it and be difficult to see. Uh, but we're going to be doing a little bit of sketching, a little bit of planning before we jump into the painting process uh, on this one.